Praise the Lord. Everybody, I said, Praise the Lord. A great night. A wonderful night. The night of supernatural wonders. How many came for a miracle? Your miracle is in the making. Today, my miracle is in the making. Everyone here, everyone online, everyone everywhere, miracle tonight. Power manifestation in your life. Healing, deliverance, Redemption, promotion, miracle, heavenly showers upon everyone tonight in Jesus' name. It's of those anointed hands, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, tonight we have confessed our miracle is in the making. And we're asking, There'll be a confirmation in every life tonight in Jesus' name. For those who have brought any challenge, any problem, Lord, roll the challenge, the sickness, the reproach away tonight in Jesus' name. For those who are concerned for somebody in the hospital, for somebody back at home that they are on their sick bed Lord I pray as these brothers and sisters standing for those people tonight miracles in the hospital and those online everywhere whatever your burden whatever your tears tonight is your night of breakthrough blessings everywhere Lord, we thank you. Confirm in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, as we come for this night of supernatural wonders, you come. You'll not go back the same in Jesus' name. Tonight we're talking on something simple and something profound. Something simple, clear to everyone, and yet it's very, very profound. I'm looking at Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power are in the in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof it talks about the tongue very simple you have a tongue i have a tongue everybody has tongues to speak and we determine our healing by the tongue we determine our miracle by the tongue. We determine our blessing, our breakthrough by the tongue. That's why tonight, as we begin the night of supernatural wonders, I want to tell you what you get is on your tongue. What you receive is on your tongue. If you say, I'm a candidate for miracle, you've decided it, it will happen. If you decide this year will be a new year for me, all the past evil will not happen again, it's on your tongue. You determine that death and life, healing and sickness, calamity and cure, goodness and evil are in the power of the tongue. They that love it, you love life, use your tongue to bring life. You want healing, use your tongue to bring the healing. You want power, use your tongue to bring the power. Because the tongue determines your destiny. That's the message tonight. The tongue that determines destiny. 
I want to be saved. You decide that by your tongue. I want to be healed. You decide by your tongue. I want to be lifted up. It's on your tongue. The tongue that determines destiny. In Mark chapter 11, reading from verse 22, it says, Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. When there is faith in your heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Let faith be at the foundation, at the fountain of your heart. And it says, have faith in God. Look at verse 23. Verse 23 says, For verily I say unto you certainly, I declare unto you that whosoever, you see that, is for you tonight. Miracle for you tonight. Power for you tonight. Amen. Whosoever, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he, which he says, shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. The tongue, he shall have whatsoever he says what do you say tonight i am well i am whole i am lifted up i am going to succeed he will have whatsoever he says aches on your tongue the healing is on your tongue the miracle is on your tongue the power is on your tongue and if you say i live you live. I said you live. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. I will have them. I will have them. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. In 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13, we, having the same spirit of faith, we, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. I say only what I believe. I don't say what I don't believe. You don't say what you don't believe. You believe in the promises of God. Say so. You believe in the power of God. Say so. You believe that tonight what you in your life, all things are possible. Say so. You believe that your concern tonight will be fulfilled by heaven. Say so. He said, it is written, I believe Therefore, have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. And therefore speak. You are going to say something good about yourself today. And it will happen. And it must happen. Too long a time, we have decided, we have, we have allowed other people to decide where we get to, what we get, what we receive. Too long a time. But from now, today, we are going to determine, we are going to decide what we get. You are going to get it in Jesus' name. The message again tonight, the tongue that determines destiny. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the tongue that restores or renews the soul. Restoration is on your tongue. And renewal is on your tongue. The tongue that restores and renews the soul. Number two, the thoughts that rule or reign in the seeker. You're seeking something. That your tongue is there is the tongue and your thought that rules and reigns in the, in the seeker. Number three, the turning that resets and refines his songs. 
our lives this year will be better than any other year we ever lived in Jesus name because we will turn and as we turn in the right direction the turning that resets and refines its sons look at number one number one we're looking at the tongue that restores and re or renews the soul the tongue we're looking at luke chapter one reading from verse 64 and his mouth was opened immediately. Who is this? This is Zechariah. An angel came to him and said, You're going to have a son. And he even told him the name. The name will be John. That's the person we know as John the Baptist. And he said, It will be great. Instead of Zechariah saying, like Mary said, be it unto me according to your word. He said, Angel, do you know I'm old already? And do you know that my wife is stricken with age and years? How can this be? And the angel said, Really, you should have kept quiet. You shouldn't have said anything. If you had any doubt, swallow it. Don't say anything. If you have unbelief, swallow that. Don't say anything. If you had swallowed your unbelief, and you had swallowed your doubting, nothing bad would have happened. But because you speak out of unbelief, and you speak out of doubting, you'll be dumb for nine months. The child will still be conceived. What God said will happen, will happen. The miracle is making for you will come. But your tongue can stand as an impediment in your life. But tonight, you will only say the practical, the positive, and the promise of God. And that promise will be yes and amen in your life. And so he was dumb for all the time the child was conceived. And the child was born eventually. What God said will happen in your life will happen. Yeah. Tonight it will happen. Yeah. And then when the child was born, they now wanted to name the child. And he, she, the signified to the wife Elizabeth that the wife will be John. And so when, when the wife said he will be John, they said nobody has borne that name in your family before. And they gave him a slate to write because they thought that he could not speak anymore. And what they were doing for nine months, they would give him a slate to write whatever he wanted. As he took the slate and he wanted to, and he wanted to write, the miracle came upon him. And they're expecting you will still act like you acted before. You will lie down like you lied down before. And they're thinking that you know, nothing new will happen. A miracle will come your way. And so it says that his mouth was open. Immediately his tongue was loose and he spake and he praised the Lord. He spake and he praised the Lord. You will speak tonight. You will praise the Lord tonight because that miracle in the making will match your very life look at acts chapter 27 in acts chapter 27 i'm reading from verse 23 for there stood by me this night the angel of god whose i am and whom i serve here is paul the apostle he had been in the sheep that be storm on the sheep it had been so difficult for them they were even casting their wares and their things outside the ship to, uh, to, to lose them and the people had not been eating if you read that whole passage for about 14 days it was a, it was a, a kind of imposed fast on them because they thought they were going to die you will not die this is not the season of death it's the season of life and so an angel appeared unto him. I want you to understand, an angel appeared to Zechariah. 
And the first thing he thought he is, the condition is bad. I mean, this condition, how can that be? An angel appeared unto, unto Paul the apostle, and he didn't doubt. I will not doubt. I will not doubt. And so he said, For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, saying, Fear not, Paul. What's your name? I mean, your own name. Fear not. What's your name then? No fear again. No fretting again. No doubting again. No sickness again. Fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. What the angel said is, Paul, between here and the place you wanted to get to, that the place the Lord has also did, you'll get to, the way is now free. The storm will not stop you. The waves will not stop you. The conditions all around you hear about, you see about, that's for them will not stop you. And so he said, Fear thou not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Do you think you understand that? All the people are not Paul that feared death. God said, because of Paul, they will not die. The Lord is telling you, he will bless you. He will bless your family. He will bless the people that live with you. Because of you, because the blessing comes upon you, everybody that attaches himself to you will have life and not death. Yeah. Will have healing and not sickness. Yeah. Will have miracle and not misery in Jesus' name. Yeah. Moreover, the Lord has given thee all them that sail with thee. That means our pastors associated with us at the headquarters there, their life is secured. That means the wives of all our people, believers, their wives, their lives are secured. That means the husbands of those wives, a believing wife, your husband, if you're a believer, a believer there, his life is secured. Pastor, we took him to the hospital. He'll come out well. Because he has given you all the people that say what we look at verse 25. In verse 25, wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. If you can laugh, you'll laugh. Be of good cheer. If you can smile, you'll smile. Be of good cheer. If you know how to be happy, be happy. Be of good cheer for I believe God. Anybody believe in God tonight? That it shall be even as it was told me. It shall be in your life. It shall be tonight. It shall be everything you expect. It shall be tonight in Jesus' name. Look at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the reformed tongue and the reserved miracle. If your tongue is reformed, there is a miracle reserved for you tonight. If you will not say what you used to say, you'll not cry the way you used to cry, you'll not regret the way you used to regret, my miracle is in the making. That's how you say your own. Number one, the reformed tongue and the reserved miracle. Number two, the ruinous tongue and the rejected miracle. 
that word reject means it's for everybody except the people that reject except the people that say no i don't want those people are not here today everybody here you are yes people yes i accept yes i receive yes it is mine but this fellow number two the ruinous tongue and the rejected miracle number three is the renewed tongue and the refreshing miracle look at number one there number one there is the reformed tongue and the reserved miracle that's what we read already and his mouth was opened immediately he had nine months to think through and never to say no anymore when you ought to say yes he had nine months to think through and to say why did i say that to the angel if i have my chance again now my tongue will be a reformed tongue and uh, when he had the chance he took the chance and eventually the um, wife got pregnant and even though he could not talk he said yes that's exactly what the angel said and during the pregnancy no problem at all how can there be a problem and he said yes that's what the angel said at the end of the nine months she delivered without any complication the pregnant women who are here tonight the pregnant women who are hearing my voice tonight at the point of delivery no complication in jesus name and so when the child was born his tongue had been reformed and now the miracle that had been reserved for him it was now given unto him and his mouth was opened immediately i like that word immediately because that's how your miracle will come tonight <laughs> number two number two we're looking at the uh, ruinous tongue and rejected miracle actually it's our tongue that ruins our lives god has something good waiting for everyone and if you always agree with god say yes lord you said i'll be healed yes lord you said i'll be delivered yes lord you said i'll be an overcomer yes lord you said i will prevail yes lord if you always say yes to the lord the miracles are reserved for you they will come to you in jesus name but look at this man in second kings chapter 7 and i'm reading there from verse 1 second kings chapter 7 look at verse 1 then elisha said hear ye the word of the lord hear ye the word of the lord what am I giving you tonight? When I say it will save you, what's that? The word of the Lord. When I say it will heal you, what's that? When I say it is finished, what's that? When I said it will lift you up, what's that? The word of the Lord, we don't have any, we don't have uh, any reason to doubt God. It says, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord tomorrow, about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of, of, uh, of uh, barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria, at your gate, miracle, at your door, miracle at your doorstep miracle you're going out and you're coming in miracle in your standing in your seating miracle in your confession confession of your mouth and the confirmation miracle in jesus name then in verse two the verse two says then a lord on whose hand the king leaned and said, the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would open, will make windows in heaven. 
It says, might this thing be a doubting tongue is a ruining tongue, ruinous tongue. And he rejected the miracle. He rejected the prophecy. He was thinking like he thought before he came in. There had been famine in three years. And because of the famine and the drought and the scarcity and the wilderness life in three years, he thought, what else are we, can we expect? We're expecting a miracle tonight. And it will happen to you. And because he didn't know it was a new day, a mighty day, it was a day of supernatural wonder, he said, even if God will open the windows of heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. Because he said, I reject that. So he was rejected from being part of the miracle receivers, the miracle catchers. But because I believe, I will receive. Because I believe, I will receive. And because you believe, you receive in Jesus' name. Look at number three. Number three, the renewed tongue and the refreshing miracle. In Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. The same angel that spoke to Zechariah now came to Mary and spoke to Mary. But Mary had a different heart. When the angel said, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Do you know that in your life this year, nothing shall be impossible? Failure will turn to success. Sickness will turn to hell. Powerlessness will turn to power. Hopelessness will turn to hope in your life. New life. New excitement. New power. New joy. New achievement. Things are different from this moment. Because with God, nothing shall be impossible. Look at verse 38. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Be it unto me according to thy word. And there is promise in every book of the Bible. And when you read that promise, I will do this for you. I will not leave you until I've done, I've finalized, I've accomplished everything. When you read in the word, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. When you read in the word, underneath you at the everlasting arms. When you read in the word, every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I've given unto you. All you need to say is, be it unto me. Be it unto me, be it unto me, according to thy word. And the angel departed from her, and it was done. And it will be done. The renewed tongue and the refreshing miracle. We're coming to point number two. Point number two, we're looking at... <coughs> Thank you very much. The thought... The thoughts that rule or reign in the seeker. When you are coming to the Lord, the thought you have is very important. The preaching is good. The worship is good. The amen is loud. Everything appears all right. But your own thought, your own thought will go a long way to determine what rules your life. And what reigns in your life? We're looking at uh, Second Kings chapter five, verse ten. Here is Naaman, and Naaman had come a long way 
looking for the miracle of cleansing the leprosy. And now Elisha gave the word, tell him, go dip yourself in Jordan seven times and your flesh will come again. But you know, before he came, he had had some thoughts. And our thoughts are very important. They either rule us or, or ruin us. Look at verse 10. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Thou shalt be clean. Yeah. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, but Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought. That's the problem. That's the pro that is the problem. Behold, I thought that. He will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. You know the story. His problem was his thought. I thought. Then he began to compare the rivers in his own country and the river and Jordan. Then his servants came to him and they said, Master, we must respect all people. They have their doubts, respect them. They have their misgivings, respect them. They have their wrong thinking, respect them. If you're going to help people, you must respect them. And you must speak to them in love. And as they spoke to him, his thoughts changed. Can you speak to people this year? In such a way that if they have bad thoughts, you change that. Can you speak to people this year in such a way that if we have thoughts that will ruin them, that will kill them, you also speak to them with love, with honor, with respect. And it changed their thoughts and it changed their mind. And as it changed, he said, okay, okay, I hear you. And he did what the man of God had said. He went in first. And those people that encouraged him were watching. He said, sir, go the second time. The third time, by the time he did it for the seventh time, everything changed for the better. And as you do what the word of the Lord is telling you, and your thought is on the word of God, and your tongue matches your thoughts, this year everything will turn around for the better. <laughs> look at uh, look at um, Second Corinthians. I'm reading from verse chapter 10, reading from verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. At the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Every stronghold in your life will be pulled down today. Every stronghold against your business pulled down today. Every, every stronghold against your progress pulled down today in Jesus' name. But look at verse 5. In verse 5, casting down imaginations. That's it. You must cast down all those negative imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought every thought the thought of I've not done that before I don't think I can do that pull down that thought the thought of we have always failed in our place, in our family and then I can number one, two, three in our extended family whenever they come to this age their light just quenches you must cancel that thought. 
Well, I prayed and fasted before and look at what happened. What hope do I have that anything will change? You must bring all those thoughts under control into captivity because your thoughts will either rule you or ruin you or your thoughts will reign over you or make you to reign and this year is a year of reigning it's a year of power it's a year of progress we bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ have you heard before that Job was sick? Have you ever heard that? I said, have you heard? First chapter, second chapter, third chapter, and then they went on and on. And all the people that came, his counselors, they spoke and spoke and spoke, and Job was still sick. And he didn't get well. And he visited him and visited him and he was still sick. He didn't get well. The thought in our hearts matter. Look at Job chapter 42. In Job chapter 42, we're looking at verse 2. Job chapter 42, reading here from verse 2. I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholding from thee. Job said, I always knew and I still know that you can do everything. If I had come to you on that first day that all those things happening, all those things happened, and I told you to reverse everything, you would have done that. But I had the thought inside me. Am I special? Good things happen to bad people. Bad things happen to good people. I know I'm good. I know I'm righteous. And should I expect that everything will be like a rosy day? He had his own thoughts. He even said, the things I feared have come upon me. Even when there was nothing wrong, there was nothing going wrong at all, Job had the thought, what if these uh, children, what if an accident happened and they were all gone, what will I do? What if my farm is burnt, what will I do? He said, the things I feared came upon me. And all the time, and when his friends came, his friends, they didn't have the matter. They said, Job, you think you are righteous? We know you are bad. If you are not bad, why will this happen to you? And all that made him to have thoughts and thoughts and thoughts. And they remained for a long time. He said, and no thought can be withholding from you. Look at verse 3. In verse 3 it says, who is, who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. He said, I've been wondering and wondering and wondering. I've been thinking and thinking and thinking. I've been imagining and imagining. And I couldn't understand. And everything made my thoughts to be upside down. But now, he said, in verse 6, in verse 6, he said, Wherefore I abhor myself and I repent in dust and ashes. This chapter 42, from chapter 1, chapter 2, all those wrong thoughts were there, all those misgivings were there, and they brought unbelief, but he said, Now, all those thoughts, I know it's not, it's not hidden from you, I repent. I repent. I repent. Look at verse uh, 10. In verse 10, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job. This thing will not continue forever. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. 
this pain will not continue forever that sickness will not continue forever that poverty will not continue forever that unemployment will not continue forever and that pressure of the devil will not continue forever your captivity will not continue forever and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before it's coming blessing coming miracle coming healing coming power coming progress coming it will happen look at number number, number what now number one look at number one the thought of foolishness of faithlessness is seen you know our thoughts matter it's not only what we'll say with the tongue after all is the thought that influences the tongue look at that proverbs chapter 29 chapter 24 verse 9 the thought of foolishness is seen all those children of Israel, okay, will go back to Egypt. The thought of foolishness is seen. Why don't we die in this wilderness? The thought of foolishness is seen. What are we going to eat? What are we going to drink now? Moses, do you want to kill us in the wilderness? My friend, what brought the idea of killing, of dying. Didn't God say he'll take you out of that land of bondage and take you to the land of promise? What brought, why do you want to kill us? The thought of foolishness is actually the thought of faithlessness, a sin. Look at that again in Proverbs 24 verse 9. The thought of foolishness is sin. And the scorner is an abomination to men. Foolishness will not come out of our mouth anymore. When God says, go up, and you say, I'm always down, that's foolish. When God says, stand and be made whole, and then you say, I cannot get well, that's the thought of foolishness. When God says, go out, I provided a job for you. You've been seeking the Lord and his righteousness. Go now. I'm going to add prosperity into your life. And then you say, there is no job in the country. There is no money in the country. Why are you saying that? The thought of foolishness and faithlessness is sin. What God says I will do, I will do. Rise up, I will rise up. Go wash in the pool of Siloam and come back and see. I will see in Jesus' name. Look at number two. Look at number two here. The thought of faith in his faithfulness heals sicknesses. The thought of faith in his faithfulness. I know he's faithful. I know whatever he has said will be done. Will be done in your life in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 11. It says, through faith also, Sarah herself receives strength to conceive. At old age, because God had promised when God promises, he doesn't look at natural things. He doesn't look at age. He doesn't look at whether biology confirms it or not. He speaks according to the power on the throne of heaven. Through faith, Sarah also herself receives strength to conceive. Strength to achieve in your life. Strength to give birth to something new, a new vision, a new project, a new success in your life in Jesus' name. He will give you your Isaac. He will give you laughter. And he was delivered of a child when she was past age. 
because she judged him faithful who had promised through faith because he judged him faithful who had promised look at number three number three here the thoughts of the father and freshness for salvation the thought of the father is what the father thinks that's what's important not what you think look at isaiah chapter 55 we're looking at verse 7 it says let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts the righteous man his thoughts negative thoughts make us unrighteous before god contradictory thoughts make us unrighteous before god and the thoughts of opposition to the word of god makes us unrighteous before god that's why it says let the righteous man forsake his thoughts and return to the lord and he will have mercy upon him i wanted a better amen there no matter for how many years you have had wrong thoughts, negative thoughts, destabilizing thoughts, unfavorable thoughts, contradictory thoughts, the moment you repent and you say, I'm sorry for those bad thoughts, what did I think? That everybody will get miracle and I will not get bad thoughts I repent. What did I think? Everybody will get healed and I will not get healed. Bad thoughts or righteous thoughts. I repent. No matter how long those wrong thoughts have been there, the moment you say like tonight, I repent. I reject all those bad thoughts. I will be well. I will be whole. Let the sick say, let the weak say, the moment you change all those thoughts, that moment the Lord will forgive you. And then it says, He'll have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. If somebody doesn't get well, my thoughts are not your thoughts. You allow your own thoughts to prevail. You allow your own thoughts to be at the forefront. And you subdued and you bury the thought of God. When you have the thought of God, you believe the word of God and the promise of God will be yes and amen in your life. If you are lame, once you have the thought of God, your own thought may be, I'm in this wheelchair. I've been here now for so many years, and what else can I do? That's your own thought. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. The thought of God is revealed in the word of God. And once you see that word of God for your salvation, for your healing, for your deliverance, and you reject your own thoughts, and you take on the thought of God, immediately miracle will happen in your life. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. The word of healing that goeth forth out of my mouth. The word of forgiveness that goeth forth out of my mouth. And the word of deliverance that goeth forth out of my mouth. And the word of power that goeth forth out of my mouth. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. It shall not return unto me void. Can I explain that to you? The word is God's messenger. And the Lord sends the word 
as a messenger to you watch go and heal him he sent his word and he healed them and that word will find you out that word will touch your life that word will raise you up that word will give you healing and perfect soundness in Jesus name when God sends forth his word as a messenger to deliver you that word will not come back and say I was not able to get her delivered uh -uh. the word will not be void the word will manifest power in your life because it says it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please that which I please that which I please what pleases God your salvation that which I please what pleases God your healing it will do that which I please what pleases God your full redemption redemption from the curse that's why the word was saying it will do that accomplish that which I please what pleases him your joy he doesn't want his children to be sad and sorrowful and to be sick and to be oppressed what pleases him is your victory and the word will accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in that whereunto I sent it that word is sent to you tonight and the miracle comes to you tonight and the power comes to you tonight and the impossible becomes possible tonight in Jesus name look at number three now number three the turning that resets and refines his sons your life tonight will be reset sometimes you look at that clock and say, ah, this clock is misbehaving it's slower than it ought to be and you take it and you reset it your life you reset it tonight you're slow you're not getting to the place he expected and the Lord has been expecting by this time now he shall be strong well, prospered, progressing, achieving, victorious. And he looks at you and he said, uh uh, it will not continue like this. He will reset your life tonight. He will refine your life tonight. On the inside, on the outside, new things coming. In Jesus' name. Look at Second Kings chapter 20. And I'm reading here from verse 1. In those days was Ezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord set thine house in order for thou shalt die and not live thou shalt die and not live it's good to know our heavenly father you will know the father you know him already you know him more and more and more in jesus name this man Ezekiah, he knew his father he knew there are some things the father will say and that's final there are some things the father will say and the father is still 
considering I will do this but if it doesn't go well with him we'll talk about it together and tonight we'll talk about it together yeah. those things in your life we'll talk about them together yeah. say amen. amen and so in verse 2 in verse 2 then he turned his face to the wall he didn't say Isaiah come you're a prophet of God what did God tell you as to the reason I am dying now because in my heart I don't want to die yet but what did God tell you you can talk to God directly tonight you'll talk to God directly and everything to be reversed in your life you will reverse it with your tongue Amen. Amen. Then he turned his face to the wall and he prayed unto the Lord, saying, Look at verse 3. In verse 3, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. He said, God, you know. When I was walking before you, I wanted to have a longer time to keep on walking before you. I, I wasn't thinking that, you know, my life will stop at this time. God, have you looked at my family? There's no child yet. I'm a king. I still want a child. You'll get what you want. God, have you seen all these neighboring country, neighboring countries? They are waging war. I want to see victory. You will see what you are looking for. Yeah. And so he said, Lord, remember, remember how I have walked before thee in truth. I'm, a, I'm with a perfect heart and I have done that which is good in thy sight and I was doing all that for a reason that your promises of a yes and amen in my life how will this happen how will this happen now if you say no to death death will run away if you say no to the devil the devil will run away if you say no to disease, disease will run away in Jesus' name. <laughs> if you say no to that demon, that demon will run away. Yeah. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, and it came to pass, it will come to pass in your life. Yeah. Miracle, it will come to pass in your life. It says, before, before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him. Negative prophecies will change. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people. God recognized that man, the captain of my people. He will recognize you. Yeah. Where are you? Heaven will recognize you. Yeah. The captain of my people. Thus says the Lord, God, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. Isaiah did not join him in the prayer. I have heard thy prayer. Yeah. All the people at the court did not join him in the prayer. I have heard thy prayer. The prayer was against the negative prophecy that came to him. I have heard thy prayer. Tonight, that's what God is telling you. I have heard your prayer. Yeah. That also has stayed there for too long, it will go. Yeah. The cancer threatening your life too long, it will have to go. 
blind eyes blindness disturbing your life how can i see how can i go out now i need help before i can go out what do you want i want my sight he has answered your prayer yeah. poverty i've been to live from hand to mouth lord this is not good I have to beg, I have to plead before I eat. Okay, what do you want? I want a job of my own. I want to earn money for myself. You have got it. Whatever you declare tonight, you have in Jesus' name. Then you say, I've had your prayer. I have seen thy tears. You will weep no more. Your tears, everything will dry up. And then it says, I will heal thee. Where is it? I will heal thee. Goiter will vanish away. The pain will vanish away. Arthritis will vanish away. Joint pains will vanish away. Blood issuing from your body will vanish away. Blood sugar. Toilet, toilet, toilet. Day, night, day, night. Everything they call diabetes. Number one. Diabetes number two, diabetes number three, diabetes whatever number. Vanish away in your life in Jesus' name. High blood pressure, you are healed in Jesus' name. And whatever else, whatever is knocking your brain, knocking your mind, knocking your heart, knocking your liver, knocking your kidney, knocking anywhere in your life tonight. Healed in Jesus' name. I will heal thee. And on the third day, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. Amen. That's what Ezekiah was expecting. That's why he prayed. That's why he turned his face to the wall. And before he began to say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, the Lord said, hold on, hold on. God has not finished with you. I said, God has not finished with you. Look at verse 6. Verse 6, and I will add, add, add. No subtraction in my life anymore. I said, no subtraction in my life anymore. The Lord said, I will add to thy days. How many years? For me. For me. After the end of that cancer. Because the cancer will end. The Lord will add healthy years to your life in Jesus' name. After the edge of that painful, terrible, money sucking disease in your life, because it will end. I said it will end. The Lord will add more years of health, of strength, of joy, of happiness, of success. In your life, in Jesus' name. And I will deliver this city out of the, out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Look at three things quickly. Number one, number one. The turn, turning to God with his word in your mouth. Don't bring any other word. Look at Hosea chapter 14, verse 2. You turn to 
God with his word in your mouth. Take with you words and turn to the Lord and say unto him, take away all iniquity. You know, the Lord is even teaching those who don't know how to pray. Yes, I want to pray. I want to talk to God. I want to have the blessing of God. What will I say to God? What word will I give him? Turn to the Lord and take with your words and say, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. So will we tender, render. They render the calves of our leaves. He has told us how to pray. When you say, heal me, he puts that word in our mouth. He will do as he has put in our mouth in Jesus' name. Look at number two. Number two, turning to his grace with his wonders on our mind. His wonders on our mind. His wonders on our mind. When we come to God and we turn to him, we are turning to him with grace, expecting the wonders in our mind. In Psalm 105, I'm reading from verse 5. Remember the, his marvelous works that he has done his wonders and the judgment of his mouth. When you come to God in prayer, don't concentrate on your pain or your problem, on your sickness, or your disease, or your arthritis. Remember, his wonders. He's done it for other people. He saved other people. Remember that. He healed other people. He will heal you. I said, he will heal you. You turn to him in his grace with his wonders on your mind. Look at number three. Number three, you're turning to his goodness in his way for your miracle. You turn to him and you bring his word to him and you're expecting his miracle to come. What are you? Miracle must come there tonight. I said, miracle must come there tonight. And look at this. Isaiah chapter 30. And we're reading from verse 21. Isaiah 30 verse 21. And then ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it when ye turn to the right or turn to the left. As you are walking and moving, you want to turn here, you want to turn there, you'll hear the voice of the Lord behind you. This is the way, the way to pray. This is the way, the way to progress. This is the way, the way to achieve. This is the way, the way to so pray and so walk that your life will please the Lord. Walk ye in each. When you do, what will happen? Verse 26. In verse 26, it says, Moreover, the light of the moon shall be at the light of the sun. God will so make a transformation that the moon with the weak light, the light that will come from the moon will be like the light of the sun. So that if you're weak, if you're dull, if you're powerless, if you're anemic, it's if like life is going out and the light that is coming, the voice that is coming, the entrance that is coming and everything looks like the light of the moon and it's dim immediately after prayer tonight, that light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. Sunshine in your life. Happiness in your life. And the sun with healing in his wings in your life tonight, in Jesus' name. What he, I am not sick, I am not weak, 
and I walk in the way he has ordained and I pray tonight in the way he has ordained. Look at what follows. And the light of the sun shall be sevenfold at the light of seven days. In your life. Your righteousness multiplied. Your happiness multiplied. Your victory multiplied. Your deliverance will turn to dominion. And your dominion multiplied. And the strength of the Lord in your life multiplied. And your speed in life as you are moving on will be multiplied in Jesus' name. The sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth and healeth and healeth the stroke of their wound. The stroke of your wound healed. The long standing wound of that sugar condition healed tonight. And the wound and the pain and the lacerations in your, in your intestine, inside you, and all the pain you're feeling inside there, healed tonight in Jesus' name. And the life that is torn apart and confused and it's like, what am I going to do now? Christ has done it. Yeah. It is done. Yeah. And you will see it. Yeah. It is done. Yeah. And I will see it. Yeah. All we need to do is to turn to the Lord with his word in our mouth. It's wonders on our mind and it's way, it's way towards the miracle. Your time has now come. Yeah. You must have it tonight. Yeah. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. You want to come unto Christ, the light of the world. And you want the darkness in your life to vanish away. You want the pain, the problem, the punishment of your sin to be taken away. And you want to have the freedom, the salvation that Christ provided for you on the cross of Calvary. Here is your time. You turn away from your thoughts. You turn away from the bad tongue. The tongue that has been getting into trouble And you want to say I come to Christ tonight Where are you? Raise up your hand A night of turning to God A night of giving yourself fully Or reservedly unto God So that a new change will come Transformation will come Forgiveness will come And the salvation of God will come to you. So raise up that hand. God bless you there. God bless you there. Raise up that hand. Anywhere you are, online, anywhere you are, raise up those hands. Tonight is the night of transformation, salvation, regeneration, and total change in your life. Raise up the hand. You're raising up your hand. Please, please, wherever you are, you stand up. God bless you. God bless you. You stand up. You say, yes, I want that salvation. I want that forgiveness. And I want that change. And I want that change. The grace of God to come into my life. Raise up that hand and, and stand up. And say, yes, I am here. Yes, I am here. And the Lord will forgive you. I said, the Lord will forgive you. When we, when we come before the Lord and we have the chance to repent and to turn and to give our lives to the Lord, there's no shame. We just say, yes, I am here. And the Lord is going to bring forgiveness to your life in Jesus' name. Turn from your unrighteous thoughts and turn from your wicked ways. And turn from the wrong use of your tongue in the past. I'm praying for you now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, 
all these who have turned to you here and everywhere else i pray you forgive them and give them your salvation with its joy in jesus name take away the guilt take away the condemnation and lord i pray right now their names will enter into the book of life in heaven in jesus name confirm it O lord in jesus name we pray keep on standing our leaders should get to them uh, ushers get to them you give them the paper to fill and we'll follow up on them later online let's do that every congregation wherever you are let's get that done and as we have turned you'll not go back to those things you turned away from in Jesus name let them just say amen now, tonight, the night of, I thought you would tell me, I thought you would say what you expect, my night of, will it happen? It will. I said it will. Yeah. Let's understand the power of God does not change. The promises of God do not change. Everything we have heard will be reproduced in our lives. Yeah. Identify that sickness here, online, everywhere. Make this night your night of supernatural wonders. The preaching is not just preaching. It's for performance. Performance in your life. Yeah. Blind eyes must open. Yeah. The lame must rise up and walk. Yeah. Long-standing ulcer must be healed. Yeah. And that devastating cancer must be healed tonight. Yeah. And all those demonic activities, they must be stopped tonight. Yeah. You raise up your hand. You lay your hand in the place where the challenge is. And then after the final amen, you will not rush out. You will rejoice for the miracle happening to you tonight yeah. because it must happen yeah. wonders yeah. must happen yeah. healing yeah. must happen yeah. deliverance yeah. must happen yeah. ready now catch it just coming your way Father, in Jesus' name, we know the tongue determines destiny, determines our healing, determines our deliverance, determines our soundness, determines our victory. We confess with our mouth, we receive now in Jesus' name. Every sickness, whatever time, long time has been there, whatever hold it has had on you there, I command sickness, come out in Jesus' name. That heavy chest, heavy heart, whatever is holding that chest or heart, be loose in Jesus' name. Yeah. Issue of blood dry up now in Jesus' name. Yeah. Pile be healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Prostrate cancer. 
the Lord touch you right now. The pain, the evidence there, I pray, miracle, deliverance, healing in your body in Jesus' name. Impaired speech. I ask now, Lord, you rectify their speech in Jesus' name. Ear problem, pain, pause coming out. The pause dry up now in Jesus' name. Deafness be healed in Jesus' name. One ear deaf, the other ear hearing slightly. Complete, perfect healing in Jesus' name. The brain, I see there's something happening in that brain. You're always touching it, always holding it. Lord, I pray that infirmity in the brain. That confusion in the brain. Lord, I pray. Heal them in Jesus' name. Something that looks like madness. As if in the public, you should remove your clothes and then be running around because everything is like scattered on the inside. Lord, I pray. Touch them, heal them, deliver them in Jesus' name. Husband and wife, the man who could not perform. I pray, whatever has weakened your system, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for everyone. Satan trying to knock this way, knock that way. Any kind of disease, any kind of ailment, any kind of infirmity. I send forth healing to everyone now in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Swelling in the tummy, come out in Jesus' name. Goiter, come out in Jesus' name. I problem pain, pain, terrible pain in the eyeball. And the eye breaking out water. And the dimness of sight. And the blindness. Lord, touch them. Heal them in Jesus' name. The problem in your throat inside. To swallow is a challenge. Be healed in Jesus' name. Everything your people ask for tonight. Everything they open their mouth and they said, That's the miracle I need. That's the supernatural wonder I need. That's the healing I need. That's the progress I need. Oh Lord, this very moment. Touch them with a touch of miracle. Yeah. Receive what you came for. Yeah. Receive what you desire. Yeah. You receive it in your heart. You confess it with your mouth. It is done. Yeah. It is done. Yeah. It is done. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. You have got it. You are now a miracle carrier. I said you are now a miracle carrier. Check off, check off. It's done.